Hey guys, Leon here from Hair God, and today in this video we're going to be looking at sebum production and how sebum production can lead to androgenetic alopecia and male pattern baldness. We do come up with a solution on how you can approach sebum production and how you can keep it under control. So if you're worried about that, then make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. Had a lot of fun making this one, let's get into it. So what you're going to learn about in this video is first you're going to learn what sebum is, then we're going to answer the question of whether or not it causes hair loss, and then we're going to talk about the process of how sebum buildup can actually cause hair loss, so it kind of answers the question already, and then we're going to look at how uh, different causes of, of sebum buildup can impact the scalp, then we're going to talk to you about how to take a nutritional approach to reduce and prevent sebum buildup. And then we're just going to give you a little bit of advice on when you should see a doctor. So first, let's answer the question, what is sebum? Sebum is the medical term for skin oils that are produced from microscopic sebaceous glands found underneath the surface of the skin. And it's just worth mentioning here that if you ever see that bracket and then a number, that means that we are citing some kind of study or publication or other resource for you to then further your knowledge uh, so if you just look in the description below, you'll have numbers and then you'll have a link to an article or something of the kind. So if you do want to check out the research, because everything that we're saying is backed by science, you can go ahead and do your due diligence. That being said, uh, this guide will touch upon sebum found within the scalp. However, it is also produced in great quantity on the face and it's produced elsewhere on the body. So the production of sebum is completely natural and is necessary as it provides the scalp and hair with moisturization and keeps the scalp's delicate pH in balance, which is very important. However, as you'll see, too much of a good thing isn't a good thing in and of itself. So we need balance. As with many functions of the human body, sebum production also requires balance. If there's too little sebum, uh, the hair becomes brittle and the scalp becomes dry. On the other end of the spectrum, if there is too much sebum, the scalp becomes overwhelmed by oil and the hair follicles actually become clogged. Even further, excess sebum can promote growth of the yeast that's linked to dandruff, which is another condition that may contribute to hair fall. So in short, yes, sebum buildup can cause hair loss. So let's take a closer look at how this works. So sebum buildup... Um, Let's, what we're going to do first is we're going to understand how hair actually grows. So the hair grows in a number of stages. So the first stage is the anagen phase. And this is the stage of active growth, wherein hair bulbs form and hair pushes through the scalp. Then we've got the catagen phase, which is the second stage. And this stage is the stage of transition, wherein the hair follicle begins to be pushed from the papilla. And then we've got the third stage, which is the telogen stage. And this is the stage of rest where hair begins to actually fall out from the scalp to make room for new anagen phase hair growth. Now, many things can disrupt the hair growth cycle and lead to premature thinning and hair loss. But one of these things is sebum buildup. And the way this works is because sebum is produced from the sebaceous glands and the glands are connected to the hair follicles, um, they actually release sebum from the same pores that produce hair. So what happens is when excess oil is produced, the sebum actually has nowhere to go. So this leads to a buildup within the pore known as a sebum ball or plug. Now this can sometimes also happen on the face and this can lead to acne. However, when it happens on the scalp, the buildup can impact the hair follicle and therefore impact the hair growth cycle. So if buildup is allowed to remain to the point of blockage, inflammation is common. And this is because the pore and hair follicle become irritated. Even if the current hair growth cycle continues to completion, i.e. the telogen phase, a new cycle may be hindered from starting. Uh, this is just simply because there is no room within the pore for new hair to form and grow. So there are a number of things that can cause sebum buildup, uh, but we're going to look at the three causes that are listed and they are the most common. So the first is androgenetic alopecia or AGA, and this is actually the most common form of hair loss and it's believed to be triggered by dihydrotestosterone, which is a natural hormone found within the body. Unfortunately, those with androgenetic alopecia are sensitive to dihydrotestosterone, and this can trigger something known as hair follicle miniaturization. 
Now, as miniaturization occurs, the sebaceous gland grows, and this means that more oil is produced and sebum buildup becomes more likely. Unfortunately, this only continues the cycle of hair loss. As more sebum is present within the scalp, more DHT is trapped within the hair follicles. Therefore, if untreated at the earliest times, it can be difficult and in some cases impossible to reverse. Another leading cause is actually a poor diet. And this is probably the most important thing that we need to understand. A high fat, greasy food that is you know, a large part of the most, uh, modern Western diet can contribute significantly to the overproduction of sebum and can also trigger things like irritation, inflammation, and blockage of the hair follicle. So the best way to combat this is just to reduce or even completely cut out greasy foods. And even the, one of the best things that you can do is to start introducing alkaline foods, which can help alkalize the bloodstream and therefore alkalize the scalp's pH. In addition to the uh, androgenetic alopecia and the poor diet, uh, interestingly, improper hygiene can also cause sebum buildup. Now, it's commonly believed that washing your hair too little can lead to an oily scalp. However, it's actually the other way around. Washing your hair too much is more likely to cause an overproduction of sebum. When you wash your hair with shop-bought products, you strip your hair and scalp of natural oils. And these oils must then be replaced, and so the sebaceous gland activates. Now, washing your hair too frequently leads to a constant production of sebum, and this means that you'll need to wash your hair more often, and the cycle continues. Therefore, it makes sense that you should cut down on the frequency of hair washing, uh, but this will vary by individual, and we recommend at Hair God not to wash your hair more than four times per week. So one of the best ways that you can reduce and prevent sebum buildup is through taking a nutritional approach. So it is to get rid of scalp sebum, you have to improve your diet. If, you, if you've got a really bad diet and you're suffering with scalp sebum, then this is going to be the best thing that you can do. And if your diet's not right, your body will continue to produce excessive amounts of oil and excrete them through the scalp, causing a lot of scalp and hair issues. So when you clean up your diet, you can, it can lead to a drastically better and healthier scalp and allow you to regrow your hair naturally. So what we recommend first is reducing unhealthy oils and replacing them with healthy oils. So that means getting rid of processed meats, vegetable oils, and fried foods, and replacing them with things like coconut, avocado, nuts, seeds, and fish. What is also good is that you focus on increasing the variety of foods you eat, and the more colorful your diet, the better. And that means eating more fresh produce and less processed and packaged foods. Now, in some cases, you may be dealing with a problem that requires more than just a change in habits and diet, and there are medical conditions that can trigger excess sebum production, such as sebaceous hyperlasia. But there are also medical conditions that can be worsened by the presence of increased sebum, including dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis. So when should you see a doctor? If you are having trouble finding the cause of your excess sebum production or if it's causing hair loss at an alarming rate, it's best to seek out a professional opinion. There are a few things your doctor can do to help you figure that out and treat the problem. And what will happen is they'll probably have a physical examination, uh, some blood tests, maybe a referral to a dermatologist, and then you'll work alongside your doctor uh, using things like antibiotics, antifungal creams or shampoos, and you'll probably be carrying that out at home. So in conclusion, uh, the buildup of sebum on your scalp can be embarrassing, and after all, it will leave your hair oily and lackluster. That being said, it can also lead to hair thinning and hair loss if allowed to continue. Fortunately, the steps outlined in this video can get you started on treating the issue, but the main point here is that excessive sebum buildup can cause hair loss, but it can be reversed in the vast majority of courses. So guys, that's what we've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day. I hope you learned something new here and we hope, just hope that you get the problem sorted. Have a great day. Thank you. Goodbye.